And so maybe we could do that. Maybe we could head over and do a little bit of epic percussion arrangement and how to um, arrange epic percussions that it that you get some decent loops or decent drum arrangements out of it. What my go-to concept is when I when it comes to trailer percussions is that I never try to make too to use too many of the lower drums and build my groove with that. So just finding So let's use this sound and let's build this. Let's change it all later, but let's start doing something here. Um, a little bit of a wrong note here, a dodgy note. No syncopated stuff, except this one. So what am I doing basically when I'm writing cinematic epic percussions? It's like think in the same range like a string ensemble. You don't play with a bass and the high strings are just ding, 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 something. So you would turn it around and uh, in the same way, I tend to think with uh, think with drums, working with drums. I don't want to use too many notes or um, uh, too many accents or too many notes in general to, and build that entire loop with low drums so that you have something like... Because that would be like ear fatigue within like a few seconds. So I'm using those big hits kind of sparse. So we could actually make this a little bit longer here and have the second part the same like the third. And just make it like this so we got like a like a nice little loop yep yeah and you're right it's it's all about filling holes <laughs> it's always <laughs> um just kidding so so, but yes, this is the approach. I just see these low notes as fundaments and then just... Let's just use decimator, um, um, you know, Audio Imperia. It's an older library. It, the, now the decimator drums, as I mentioned before, is now part of Cerberus. So I could load that, but I just like to use this patch. So we could I could just use this. It's pretty okay. And yes, I always quantize everything. And I hit several times because I have set it to, I don't know what I set it to. I think I set it to iterative quantizing, like 60. So I have to have it, I have to, you know, um, click the Q key just once maybe. So it just gets close to the initial node value and not directly on points. So if you click it several times, it's, let's say it sinks in more and more.
Let's do... Let's do a little bit of more hole filling here. Ah, not, not really. Not with these drums, so... Um, so, you could see that basically as some kind of a cello right now, a percussive cello, and I got the Devastator trailer drums as kind of the, the double basses. Is it like really that CPU uh, heavy? Because let me just... Yeah, I mean, that's, I know this is kind of, I'm sorry that I did this, but I just remember that I, I'm not getting used to that th thought that I'm having an 18 core here. So it, it probably doesn't do anything when I just bypass the instrument. But I never, that's why I'm, I'm sorry, but I never realized that it's that, um, that it's that uh, CPU heavy. <clears throat> so what I want to do here is for the trailer drums, and I think we talked about this, or I followed that for a second, when it was, um, I think it was um, Dragon's music who talked about this when building percussions, that stuff comes in your way when you layer this. And this is like a perfect example, because you got the, the decimator drums by, um, by Audio Imperia, and... Um, if you just listen to that oh there's some no first note missing oh it just slipped off so um, when I listen to this instrument here what I instantly want to do is load some reverb to that sorry EQ oh my mind is fr frozen fry it up i mean i can't even say this so um <laughs> i'm sorry so um like 200 hertz something like 200 hertz in this area when you listen uh to these drums you hear that kind of roomy sound which is cool uh in general but in this example it's kind of disturbing So if you take that out, you still have a lot of boom going on, which I try to minimize a little bit more. But doing it like this. When you listen to that right now, compared to... I could do it maybe even more. Um, by doing something like this. So I just basically got rid of all that, you know, boomy, nasty sound, which is around here. It just... I don't know, it happens, I think it happens with almost every, even drums, when you when you get rid of 200 hertz, something like this, uh, you can fix a lot of stuff. I think it's like the tonal area <clears throat> of, of, of percussions, and when you get rid of these, you get like a nice and clean sound um, without changing the sound. So when you listen to that... Listen to this without. And obviously they are all pretty loud, so I may want to... So I want to turn these down a little bit here. <clears throat> Just doing some gain staging. So this is also pretty cool uh, a concept when you just work with especially orchestral stuff.
turn up your volume as much as possible so that you know it's not really healthy what I'm trying to say, but turn it up that much that if you really would hit like a staccato note, like really loud, 127, that you would almost hurt your ears. I mean, you have probably or hopefully a limiter at the end, but by doing this, you will force yourself to work with all the lower stuff, you know, with a mezzo forte samples, with a forte samples, instead of like the triple F layers, and just turn your volume, your, I mean, your faders. Let me just open the mixer right now. So you can see like, like these two instruments here. Let me play them. Like, you know, put it down like whatever, you know, like 60B, minus 60B, or even minus 12. And um, in addition, when you just work with uh, other, I mean, on these epic percussions, you need like the full blast. But if you do that on orchestral percussions, <laughs> orchestral instruments, you probably want to lower the um, the velocities and make use more of the forte, mezzo forte, pianissimo samples and whatever, and crank your volume really high so that you get like, when you get to the maximum, when you get to the to the climax or um, the high, the, the, the most intensive part of your music, that you can make it really loud. And most of the time you will be surprised you can get that loudness, loudness with just using the F samples. You probably never go to the, you know, um, up to like 127. <clears throat> so the next thing we are going to do is, um, so we got this fundament here. So as for punch, as for low instruments, this is all enough. We don't need more of this. And this is a mistake where a lot of people, I mean, just, you know, guessing, but from just hearing tracks where a lot of people go wrong, that they just try to layer like five or 10 libraries of the same range. And then you mess up things. This is a point where it gets really muddy because you can't, I mean, if you're really good at EQing, you will probably be able to select that part of these drums and take that colorish you know frequency spectrum of that of these drums and melt them all together but it's not necessary you're just doing like you know i don't know like sisyphus work or what is it called like when you do like really detailed stuff you can't really hear at the end what's more important is that we now we got that fundament right that we have to add something which is adding impact okay so we use these ethnic drums and there is like this patch. So you may want to be careful. Um, do you want to sound, you get like kind of this ethnic range or do you want to have it like clean, let's say um, kind of neutral cinematic. So this is on you, but um, I'm just using this as an example. So you want to use something which of, is of high frequency and not not interfering with these with these other drums but that they are clearly audible. Something something like this. Let's record something like this. Um Sounds like a marching drum. And this is the cool thing um, that when you layer or do this layering stuff, if I would play all drums like this. Then you would probably get that military feeling. But because it's just this, I just sneak it into that percussion uh, arrangement. I think that's enough. I should probably save the session. I realize right now that I didn't save the session at all. So let me just save that. Epic. Percussions. <clears throat> mm. 
Yeah, surgically, surgical EQing. It, it makes sense, I think, when you are about to mix your track that you get rid of frequencies you don't need. So, for example, you get rid of, you know, the, the bassish part of trombones when you work with a very loud tuba, for example, or you get rid of kind of the mid frequencies or the higher frequencies of trombones when you want to introduce a French horn, something like this. It makes sense. But in general, yes, I agree. All that surgical EQing and, and sitting there and just, you know, for hours. Okay, so let me quantize this. And so to have a little bit of, at least a little bit of variation, let's copy that part before and just change. We can start this a little bit lower here. It's funny, when you work like this, it always sounds if someone falls down the stairs. This is just the most... It's it's most funny or the funniest when you do that with choir libraries and just move the velocities around. It's like It's actually okay. So the next thing we're doing is we load up something that is really high and I think we should use, you know, let's load some performance percussions, bongos that I re-reviewed yesterday, uh, last stream. Not really sure which ones we're using, but probably. Just have to get rid of that. Okay, so minus 80 milliseconds. So we just record some 16th, nothing else. Just plain, pure, stupid 16th notes. So just doing like the half of it and then I think I was pretty stable. No, not really. I should really practice playing with, you know, latency introduced. Probably use the higher ones. Let's see this. Yep. But let's try to get rid of. Oh, just have to delete this. So all I want is that high. Nee, 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 nee. I totally don't care if I change the entire sound for that because I just want to have some. Ele I totally don't care if it's bongos or you know bingos, <laughs> whatever bingo bongos, whatever. It's just I all I want 
is to have that high something which is creating a pulse. So now we just make to make it a little bit more realistic we just introduce we, we set back that titan thing and just make it minus 80 milliseconds so we have that nice effect that performance samples was magically able to build in percussion uh you know samples because now it sounds more it sounds as if the samples itself is more connected to each other rather than just having you know traditional hits and then so they seem to cut something out from the performance or of the performance of players and then build these samples with it it sounds really cool so how does this sound in general so you get basically four layers and you know so basically i knew what i was trying or let me put it in the other way uh we just went with something but the the structure is clear so of course it always depends on what is part of the non what is you know what is going on on the non-percussive side of that track do you have a lot of trombones do you have no trumpets at all do you don't you're not having some kind of high strings just low stuff then you have to you know arrange this percussion um these percussion tracks um and taking care of what is going on with the rest of the track and vice versa so it's like a big you all this is why i don't, also don't like when people come along when i work with strings i always take away like you know 2k on the viola <laughs> because what viola is it like an orchestral tools viola is it one from you know audio imperia or adio or whatever so it's like you just have to it's like i always put three spoons of salt when i do spaghetti so how much spaghetti you do you know is it like a full pot for like 10 people is it like for yourself only do you do you add tomatoes do you make it more like uh, you know, Arabiata or something, you know, it all matters. So I would never go with something like always do this, always do this. You just have to get used to the process and react and do your arrangement and also your percussions according to what's happening, what's going on inside the track. I just want to maybe see if we can spice that up a little bit losing, using more perf percussion. Let me just load the let me just try the low certos. No. I just want to let's load the Gran Casas hard mallets. So let's see how this works when we put that together. So it could work because the Gran Casas are not like directly, you know, hard hitting, sharp samples like Decimator Drums or the Trailer Drums by Devastator. Um, they are a little bit more smeary in a positive sense. So we could see if this fits somehow. We could simply layer this, probably not introduce more mud but layer this with a decimator drums here and we have to move it up to C3 So again, I'm like over the top here. Just maybe dry these down a little bit more. So 
So I think that sounds pretty cool, actually. So we just try to add, I just, let me just play this in a loop. And now do all kinds of nice things. So you could come up with a simple, you know, compression. better so this is also pretty cool I, I know that Steven Slade does that sometimes that he like likes to really squash the mix And then dial back the mix of the compression, so you got like the natural sound of it. So you kind of fill the holes, again, fill the holes, and um, uh, make, this, make this percussion arrangement a little bit more, you know, layered. If that if that makes sense, it's not like sharp and pristine and kind of stiff anymore or ster sterile or how do you say it's more a little bit more organic. And what also comes to my mind, okay, Andy, you're leaving. Thanks for being here, and see you soon. Thanks for being here. Have a nice day. <laughs> Use protections. Yeah, I should just try to get used on that. On you know, when working with the keyboard and and stuff. I will make sure to put them over my fingers. <clears throat> okay. So, um, okay. Have a good night too. Dragon's music. See you soon. Let's talk soon. Um, one thing I want to get into also is that I did a lot of uh, quantization. But what I want to do right now is get rid of that and humanize this a little bit more. Especially these things here. These guys here. So let me just introduce some kind of what I normally do when I want to do that is go to randomize over here. Hope you can see that all right and put like eight ticks something. So now we're saving again, auto saving again. I should also save just to go sure. <clears throat> So then I'm not highlighting the first one, but all of the uh, all of these other ones, and just hit Q once. So now nothing happens because is it just the the solution, the screen resolution? Um, why why is nothing happening? So usually if you just hit randomize, it should work. Let me just hit more like fifteen. What is going on? Why is it not working? What did I do wrong again? Randomize eight. Maybe I put in the iterative quantize if I turn that off. Oh, that's a bummer. I really have to turn. Yeah, well, of course you have to, because otherwise it would just overwrite and get into conflict probably. So what I'm trying to do now, okay, so I have to turn off iterative quantizing then you can introduce the randomize feature here. And I just highlight these and just hit it like a few times. And then, I mean, if I would just overdo it, totally overdo it, you put like 20 ticks and then you just hit the quantize button and you hear, it's like definitely sounds drunk. So, So thanks for not being able to just undo it.
whatever. So Ghost in the Machine. So I'm doing this for this track. And I also want to do this for the fast stuff up here. And maybe also for these. Just to add a little bit of humanization. And if you just listen to the full thing. So we get some, you know, some decent sounding epic percussions. And the last thing, of course, you want to do is that you just... Um, I mean, you could do more. You could use multiband compression. You could also work with different compressors and just slight, slight, slightly introduce each of these and not, you know, hard hitting each of these compressors, but just using several instead of one. And um, we could do that, actually. Let's just do this. Why not? So let's maybe dial back on that a little bit. Got a little bit going on. Then we should set up some drummer and see what magic comes from this guy here. Set it to neutral. I think okay no didn't happen hey Rob nice to see you here you know how, how Twitch works, right? So the last thing we're doing is, of course, set up a decent, you know, amount of limiting. And let me just move that up here because I want to put... I mean, we could even, you know, dial back a little bit on each of these compressors and introduce more compressors. I think I had one, one project where I just wanted to create some kind of a special and weird sound. I used like three or four compressors. And instead of just using every one for like 30 or 40%, I used every one of these for like 5 or 10% maybe. So we could, you know, replay this and repeat this and add more and more of these, these plugins and dial them back a little bit and it, it's actually funny what can happen when you just don't work with just one plugin and use it for like 100 or 80 percent whatever but maybe three or four and just dial them in for like 10 percent so um of course you want to make sure that you limit your i mean if it's just like if you're about to create a loop or a percussion track so otherwise uh, you would have a lot of other instruments going on uh, so you would dial back the gain, of course, but since we're just doing percussion, you want to do some decent limit limiting. And what also does wonders always is the inflator. And as I mentioned it always, as much as possible, I dial this in after the mastering limiter because this is where it really shines because you see what's happening right now. I got my, you know, the invisible limiter right here.
So I just put it up to like 40, 45 percent. And it's just, you know, slamming everything away, but without over compressing um, or over limiting a track. And yes, yes, SuperNap, after the mastering limiter, that's really like, I, I, I don't know, this is one of these uh, things you can use on everything. And this is wh where some of these presets, like I said before, I don't use presets, meh, 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 but <laughs> actually at this point, it really makes sense when you just use the inflator after your last mastering limiter because then it, it's not kind of limiting or saturating but it's just distorting the overtones of your entire track and that's why you can dial it in even after the limiter and if you set the output to like minus um, 0 0.1 db nothing happens anyway so this is like the maximum output i want to have anyway and you can clearly hear that um, maybe we can dial this back a little bit So this is I I'm not even sure how how uh, who said that, but I just remember this one guy on a forum wrote. Remember when you dial in the uh, the uh, the uh, inflator, just always use it behind the mastering limiter. And then I just tried it, and I was just off my socks because it sounds like your track is like thirty percent louder after limiting. Uh, so this is why I'm actually uh, you know kind of convinced that limiters in general more or less work the same but the real mystery or <clears throat> the magic i want to add with a with a final mastering process is that i can introduce that with the inflator but just dial this in for like 30 or 40 percent and your track gains like a volume you can't do even if we just crank it up let me just crank it up um let me just bypass this and then we just make <laughs> So this would probably be a level where I would be, yes, it's it's like, you know, somebody comes in a bar and just, bleh, you know, destroying everything, but without actually destroying something. He just runs around pretending to destroy something. So um, this would be like that level. And if you just now activate the inflator again... You know, if it's like a really punchy, aggressive mix, of course, it depends on the music. Do you have more metalish instruments? You probably have some guitar. It also helps, you know, to add like this stuff. But there is nothing... I mean, our ears may be a little bit saturated right now. So if we just give it a rest for like a few hours and you listen to this again, you would maybe say, yeah, but you probably dial that back for like maybe a dB or something. <laughs> And even if you get like a jump to like 4 dB somewhere here in the reduction, but... Of course it's very saturated, probably because of the, of the um, compressors, but it's still okay. It's not really like that you feel um, that it starts, you know, clipping or that you get the feeling that something is clipping or distorting. Um, what I find way more disturbing or annoying is when tracks sound overcompressed. What you hear a lot is when you listen to a track. Let's just dial this to like a decent level back. What I find way more disturbing is when you listen to something like this. And maybe not the attack set right. Oh, there's a lot of just have to <laughs> probably get rid of this this is like the the Gran Casa right? oh there's a lot of rumbling going on we just have to get rid of this
Well, there's a lot of hell going on after that. Let's cut that out for a second here. So if you listen to this, this sounds overcompressed, definitely. So you don't want to go that route. So I would say definitely see you on Wednesday, maybe before. And if you happen to be on my Discord server, I will be, of course, around also during the next days. And um, yes, thanks for being here, everyone. And see you soon. Take care and bye.